Number 1. Walls of Derry. As Ireland's first planned city Derry was given a set of diamond-shaped defensive walls in the 1610s to protect its newly arrived English and Scottish colonists, planters. The walls of Derry have the distinction of never being breached, and stood up to a 105-day siege in 1689 during the Williamite War. Derry is an outstanding example of a walled city and was also the very last city in Europe to be given defenses. Number 2. Guildhall. Completed in 1890, the Guildhall was commissioned by the Honorable Irish Society and has Neo Gothic and Tudor Revival architecture. The Derry and Sturban District Council sits in this red sandstone monument, easy to identify for its traceried windows and clock tower with carved jams and archivolts on its portal. The first stages of the Seville inquiry into Bloody Sunday took place in the Guildhall in the early 2000s and the building doubles as a cultural venue and site for tourists. Number 3. Bogside Murals. A poignant reminder of Derry and Northern Ireland's difficult recent past, the Bogside Murals are 12 large paintings in the Bogside neighborhood. It was in this part of the city that Bloody Sunday took place, and in 1993 two brothers Tom and William Kelly, and their friend Kevin Gasson, collaborated to record this events, champion civil rights and express their hope for peace. Number 4. St. Columb's Cathedral. In a Northern Irish style known as Planter Gothic, St. Columb's Cathedral was built within the walls for the Honorable Irish Society in the early 1630s. The nave and tower are from the earliest phase of construction, making this the oldest standing monument in Derry, while the chancel, Spire and Chapter House came in the 19th and 20th centuries. In the porch is a foundation stone that originates from the earlier big church dating to the 1100s and town down to build Derry's ramparts. Number 5. Tower Museum. In a historic tower in Derry's city walls, this museum goes into depth on the history of the city. The award-winning exhibition begins in prehistory and takes you up to the 1960s. In a separate gallery you can see artifacts from La Trinidad Valencera, a Spanish armada ship that was wrecked off the Donegal coast in 1588. You'll then continue the journey through the eventful second half of the 20th century at the cinema, explaining the story, causes and outcome of the troubles. Number 6. Peace Bridge. A 21st century landmark for Derry, the Peace Bridge spans the Foyle River between Ebrington Square and the remainder of the city centre. The location is more than symbolic as the crossing is a literal bridge between the waterside and cityside communities, which are generally unionist and nationalist respectively. Completed in 2011 the Serpentine Pedestrian Bridge is 235 metres long and was a collaboration between AECOM and Wilkinson Air Architects, the firm behind the Gateshead Millennium Bridge. Number 7. Free Dairy Museum. Dairy's turbulent years from the 60s to the 90s are neatly summed up at this museum that opened in 2006. The Free Dairy Museum tells you everything you need to know about the Battle of the Bogside, Bloody Sunday, and Operation Motorman, complementing its exhibitions with more than 25,000 artifacts. Along with letters, posters, and personal effects, there are also photographs and archive footage. Key to understanding these events is learning about the oppression of this working-class community and the internment that helped raise tensions. Number 8. Free Dairy Corner. Back in the Bogside neighborhood there's a monument at the junction of Rossville Street, Leckie Road, and Fawn Street. The message you are now entering Free Dairy was painted in 1969 by a local activist and marks the entrance to what was a self-declared autonomous nationalist part of the city in the early stages of the Troubles. Initially this was part of a row of terrace houses, but those have been demolished, leaving a single standing wall in the central reservation of Leckie Road, which is today a dual carriageway. Number 9. St. Columbs Park. At Waterside on the right bank of the River Foyle is a rolling park that was once a noble estate before being bought for the people of Derry by the London Derry Corporation in 1845. Tucked into the riverbend, it's a serene place to stroll or go for a summer picnic, and can be visited on a river walk after crossing the Peace Bridge. 
The manor house at St. Columb's Park House was built in the 18th century and is today used for accommodation and as a conference center, with a cafe on the ground floor. Number 10. Siege Museum. In 2016 an extension to the Apprentice Boys of Derry Memorial Hall was completed with a new exhibition about the 1688 Siege of Derry. There are artifacts and first-hand accounts from within the city during the siege, as well as details of archaeological digs around the city which have brought to light tools, ceramics, and weapons. You can also catch up on the history of the associated clubs of the Apprentice Boys of Derry. Hope you like this video. For more videos, please subscribe to our channel.